Uh, Judy, thank you for the minutes. Um, does somebody want to move. I'm Sorry, I seem to have lost the English language. I, move <laughs> the so no. I've been alone all day. What can I say? <laughs> Would some, uh, Alan, you have moved approval. I yes. Second. Okay. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. So our next item is CPA applications. And um, Judy, I'm sure you know, but I, know, I, don't... I think it's my turn to take minutes. So I no, will... I, I really will take minutes today. Oh, I okay. have not taken minutes in seven years. And you know, it's my parting okay. gift. Not to you, Alan, but to Judy and Susan. <laughs> okay. No. Okay, thank you. That's good. Um, <laughs> that will make life a little easier. Actually, I guess it is a gift for you if it means you don't ever have to do this again, I right? Don't, I, don't, I don't have to move for, really to the worst. For this group. Yeah. Um, so um, last time we met, we reviewed a draft uh, of um, Paul Newland or Watermelon Wednesday's application to bury the electrical lines up at, up around the West Waitley Chapel. Yeah. Um, sadly, I think uh, when the his neighbor um, consulted with Eversource, uh, it, he was told that they would take no responsibility for maintaining buried lines and That's it would be on good. him. So, so uh, Paul hasn't withdrawn an application because he'd only submitted a draft to us, but he did not submit an application for CPA funding. Okay. Just as a commentary on that one, I was up with the insurance agent inspecting the chapel and Paul and Claudia came by and we were talking about this. The insurance agent, who is extremely good, said in all the claims he had seen forever, no matter what the line was like, Eversource was responsible up to the building and the owner after that. And he found this just absolutely absurd. And it's just I it is what it is, but if if right. you ever run into personally, I would I would uh check more than the farmer did. But, well, I anyway. could entertain you all for the entire hour with the stories of a couple of years ago, and it was two different incidents when Eversource was sending excessive voltage to our house and our tracker shut down as a result. It's a self-protection mechanism. Yeah. Uh it also affected a house down the street from us um, to the point where uh, that person's generator blew up. I don't mean blew up, like exploded, but died. And it, I, I uh, copied my letter to Eversource to the select board and Joyce appreciated it, I think, but it was, it was just weeks of gobbledygook with every every repairman who came to the house saying it's because of all those huge um, solar installations down Christian Lane, our lines can't handle it. Hmm. So Eversource, right? <laughs> no. Okay. Um, okay, Judy, do you want to talk to us about the center school applications? Okay. Um, we had reviewed preliminary ones and we didn't have the final estimate that went into the for the grant for the state grant um we wound up applying for six hundred thousand dollars in roughly six hundred thousand dollars in grant money from the state to cover just the roof masonry and windows because the estimates we got were so high for those. Um, and we requested a 12% match yeah. from the town, for, from the CPA. Um, a, we were told that a 10% a match would, would uh, 
make them look more favorably on the application and anything over 10% would uh, make it worthy, quote, worthy of special consideration, end quote. So we chose 12%. And I think that's something like $82,000 on, on the 601 or whatever it is roughly. So the application is for up to 96,000, including the 100% match on the, on the National Trust $14,000 application. I have no, no idea how much we can expect to get. I would, I would be delighted, but <laughs> what's the phrase? Sore amazed if we got the whole six hundred thousand dollars from the state. Um, but that's that's where things are. The budgets were of they're in the revised application. Um, we're into this high construction cycle and inflation, construction inflation that every other building project is running into. Um, you know, Jones Library, the Bridge of Flowers, everything is coming in over budget. And these, these projects are no exception. I think I wrote in my email that I was flabbergasted by the by the prevailing wage markup that Galvin put in there. So it was over a hundred percent, which I mean, this is municipal bid requires that you price it based on what they call prevailing wage, which is the union wage in the area, and or the union. I don't maybe the state union wage. I don't know. And I've typically thought that that was like a 25% markup. I think probably the markup also includes things like, you know, it's a pain to deal with a town on an order. You have to go to committee meetings. You have to, there are work order changes and stuff. There's, there's extra hassle involved when you're working with a town. Um, sometimes the checks can be late. So my guess is there's some of that in there too. I asked George Dole, who I think most of you probably know was the project manager for the town hall restoration from Jones Whitsitt. And I said, George, I, I entitled my email reality check. I just, I, it just was inconceivable to me that, that this would be the case. And he wrote back a fascinating response, which was, oh, good. I'm glad you talked to Galvin. I was going to recommend that you, you touch base with them. They're very good. He said they had used them, I think also on the Ames Library project about 10 years ago. And I found a, a workaround to the bid prevailing wage requirement that if a firm is small enough and can prove that most of the work is done by the owners, they don't have to pay themselves prevailing wage. I mean, that's kind of ludicrous to, pay yourself, you're, you're getting a profit someplace else. And he thought that maybe they would still qualify for this. Um, so that's something that we'll definitely look into. Um, we can see about other quotes. He also added that it's very, very difficult to get a Mason to come and do anything these days. So, and my guess is probably Galvin has more work than they can, or enough work that they priced it high didn't worry too much about it. We go out to bid anyway. So that's where that stands. Um, the roofing estimate was also high. It came in over like $337,000 um, without any of the structural support work. Galvin's estimate, by the way, did include about something like 20 or 25,000 for structural support work on the on the roof uh, where it connects to the to the structural support it's the bottom bottom it's what's called the parapet estimate and at the bottom 
also uh, within, there was a time to shop around before the application went in for other estimates. And, but since that George, and we don't have other estimates, I asked also asked George Dole if he could recommend, if he had any experience with slate st substitutes. And he responded that yes, they had used it on the Ames Library. They did real clay tiles in front and put the slate substitutes on the rear. And, and he recommended a firm called Da Vinci. And he said, you need to get, you don't want to use their recycled product, the product that uses recycled plastic. You want the the new because it the recycle doesn't hold up in our climate. And Donna said that was it was it MHC that also recommended or mentioned the firm. Well, I, you may remember that you all that sometime I actually just found the materials um, cleaning out files I, that I went to a workshop that the MHC ran on. Um, the secretary's standards for use of substitute materials and the Da Vinci. I, di I didn't, I was just checking and I'll stop looking at my iPad. I didn't realize Da Vinci, anyway, they also talked about Da Vinci as a good product. I didn't, I didn't actually realize it was a firm that did installation. I thought it was a product. Well, they do manufacture, <laughs> no. they, they, they manufacture, they don't install. Right, that's what I mean. Yes, yeah. yes, yeah, yeah. Um, they're, if you look at their website, they're primarily focused on the web on homeowner products, especially in Florida and California, um, with a big emphasis on replacing shake roofs because of fire danger, which I thought was interesting. Um, Rich Korpieski sent me an email this morning saying that he he's looked into it and it seems to be there the firm of choice for commercial and institutional buildings in New England. And their roof has a 50 year limited warranty with their tiles. And based on the information on the website, it looks like it, they claim. And the, it looks like the labor and the materials would be about half of what a, a traditional high quality slate roof would be which would make a big difference. Um, do you and your partners have, maybe maybe it's too early if you and Rich were just communicating today, but um, I remember that Alan and John Robleski and I took a field trip to Amherst while we were all working on the town hall to look at some window. Oh, we, uh, yeah, it's, I mean, you couldn't do it. I mean, you've just heard about this today, but presumably that, yeah. will, be, that will be something yeah, will, some group of people will do. I'm also, also trying to find out <laughs> what firm was recommended for the Jones Library work because they're using synthetic slate. So I have a friend, uh, email into a friend who's on the Amherst Historical Commission. Hetty Startup. And they, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, their latest plan, of course, is just to abandon all pretense of historic preservation, but that's, that's Amherst. It's, <laughs> no. it's enter into a dizzy ice pipe. <laughs> right. um, 45 minutes on the phone with it. So um, that's where we are. Um, it's obviously the case that we're going to, that the project will use secretary standards and um, trying to be historical. Um, my guess. I guess. Oh, sorry. No, no, go ahead. Well, I was just going to I say was that. Gonna say, uh, uh, I was just going to say, I have thought all along we'd be fantastically lucky to get $400,000 from this grant, which would mean the application would be something on the order of 50,000. Could be higher, could be lower, could be nothing. Obviously, if we don't get a grant, there's there's no need to fund anything for this application. 
So I, I have a couple of questions that are not, I mean, our, our job with regards to this application is um, particularly to uh, express an opinion on whether or not it qualifies for historic preservation funding, um, CPA funding. Um, but Alan and Susan, do you have questions about what, what you've read and what Judy has reported? No, I think you've done a good job of laying out the, your findings. It makes it makes sense. You're muted, Alan. You know the wrong button. No, I. I have no questions either yet. I mean, I'm, I may have some later, but so far, it sounds it sounds good. Um, as Susan said, I'm okay. Okay. Um, so I guess I just have two questions. And one is the question that I already asked you at the CPC meeting the other night, Judy. If we get the grant, now the single state grant, for which we've been able to apply, um, we, uh, it appears we'll be able to do some, but not all of the historic, exterior historic preservation. So maybe I'll ask my less important question first. What do you imagine the process would be for deciding how to spend the money that we receive? And was there anything in your application that laid out a sequence, a priority? I can't remember the exact wording, but all along we have told everybody we would, we would give the roof and the structural support highest priority. And I think you can see that in the follow-up application, which is just for supplemental money for the roof and not for anything else. Okay. I think once the roof once the roof is there and in good shape, then there's time to make decisions about where to go from there. Um, and my other question, this is the one I asked the other night, by accepting this grant, which is to rehabilitate a municipally owned building um, to be used for non-municipal purposes, what, uh, what commitments, if any, does the town make? To, to retain ownership for a certain time, to follow the, just. There, there are no commitments in the application that I saw for related to ownership. Um, there are commitments to get the work done by the end of fiscal 2026, I think. And it might be the, the answer. that the purpose of the grant, I th the document is all geared toward how will this further economic development or housing units in in the community. Um, and the whole purpose of the grant, as far as I can tell, is for a town to take a dilapidated building and use it for um non-municipal purposes that are going to stimulate growth and i i think given that um saying that the town has to own it forever would, would be counterproductive in terms of the basic goal read but it it might be that the answer to my question would come at the point of being awarded a grant and seeing the wording in the grant agreement and that it yeah. isn't the, yeah yeah there's nothing in the application form yeah Okay. Um, or the guidelines. I mean, you know, anything. Right. Right. Anything. right, right. Okay. Thanks. Um, I think should should we then uh, vote on whether to um, endorse this application as eligible for historic preservation funding? Is that okay with people? I think it's. I think it's eligible given that 
already that it's on the National Register. I think what you're doing is endorsing the preservation work. And if we don't, there's no turning back if we don't. We lose, you know, th this is to maintain or preserve the building so that it, you know, it remains viable for whatever it's going to be used for. That's how I view it. Right. But I don't think, I mean, Judy has said that it isn't. It is there don't seem to be any hard and fast, you know, guardrails about use, but from and I haven't read either the guidelines or the application we submitted, but I think we could not take the money. Let's get all the money in this hypothetical, take the six hundred and whatever it end up would end up being nearly seven hundred thousand with the matching money. And mm -hmm. um and do the do all the exterior renovation and then decide that we want to move three town departments into the building. We can't do that. At least not in not in some defined period of time, not short order. <laughs> it is yeah. it is to renovate no, it for non for non municipal use. Yeah. Do, do you see what I mean, Susan? Yeah, but well. No, I see. I see what you're saying. I still I think worry. The whole... about... Go ahead, Judy. I'm sorry, Susan. I think the whole okay. purpose of the this push for the town to take on the work is to see that the final use is more of a public benefit than either of the two proposals that were submitted. The two, either the two private proposals. The select board was very unhappy that they didn't feel that either of those directly benefited the town, the, the projects, that they were not. And so the whole goal of this is to try and get eventual uses that are for the public benefit or that the town, let's say, that the town values. Right, but, th but that's, that is correct. But the specific grant is about not making the distinction between public benefit or something that isn't a public benefit, but between a municipal function or a non-municipal function, right? Yes, but I don't see how that affects the CPA application at all. It doesn't. We're just, I'm just trying to answer yeah. Susan's question. Okay. I'm good. Um, well, I went through the little spreadsheet, you know, the little flow chart that we've looked at many times um, uh, for eligibility um, for historic preservation funding. And I uh, believe it is and would like to move that we uh, say so to the CPC. I'll second that. I think it's. Any further discussion? Okay, all in favor? Aye. Okay. okay. Judy, do you want to talk about your second application? Yeah, um, this one is by way of insurance policy the um the cpa cpc has accepted what they call place marker applications with where for circumstances that might arise um in this case the town submitted an application for supplemental funding increase the grant wasn't, excuse me, wasn't sufficient to cover the roof repair and, and the structural support. And I left the amount blank on the idea that nobody had any idea how much was involved. And Donna reminded the CPC that there's a requirement that these grants can't be 
applications can't be amended after 60 days um, once they've been submitted. So um, I will have to come back with a cap on how much the request is is up to, um, which there hasn't been time to, to deal with yet. Um, so I would recommend that this one be deferred to the next meeting. Um, uh, thanks. I I understood. I had understood that you th thought the placeholder application, the blank application, would be uh, activated only if the state funding didn't come through. Was I wrong? Well, yes. I think it's to be activated only if if the state funding comes through and there's not enough to, to finish the project. I mean, if you get $300,000 and and the town matches 36,000 or whatever it would be, and the whole thing costs 375,000, you wouldn't want to hold up the whole project because of the shortfall. I don't envision that anybody's going to ask for four hundred thousand dollars on this, and the task will be to find out <laughs> what the appropriate cap yeah. is. I mean, nobody would fund that, right. and and I don't think I don't think anybody would ask for that. But I think in order to do this, one needs to talk to the new town manager and see what possible other sources of funds there are. Um, and to try and determine a reasonable, a reasonable cap, and I, I don't know what that is at this point. I, I don't sense that the city has feeling it's got unlimited pockets on this project. No, in fact, I would go the other way. <laughs> no, and and it really, even even the grant you've requested the center school committee has requested the 96,000 would as I said the other night be the highest grant approved other than the grants we approved for the town hall renovation in you know a lot of years I I had um probability adjusted that's not true but pardon I mean I said probability adjusted if, if you drew a bell curve of what the probability is that the amount of requests. Yeah, but it's but that's not the way people think about money. Think about the way people are talking about inflation and the cost of eggs. Yeah. Um, but um, uh, I assumed you would submit you would complete a placeholder application for the uh, for the artificial replacement. But it sounds like your committee. I mean, again, maybe your committee hasn't met to talk about that. We haven't talked about it. I, as far as I tell, that's that's the likely option. I don't. Um, I, th I think actually that will have to be the option just to probably get the basic work done on the roof. That's my personal opinion based on no, no financial, concrete financial information. Um, Alan, go ahead. No, I think I'm okay for the moment. Okay, I misunderstood. I, um, given all that, would like to suggest that, uh, the historical commission um, not vote on the the blank application, <laughs> which is essentially what it is, and and wait until and less than until um, that application is completed. That was my recommendation. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it doesn't seem like yeah. there's any reason to. Right. Okay. Um, anything else on the center school? Prayers. All right. Pardon? Prayers. Prayers. 
whatever the heathens among us use. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Um, okay, uh, so I've been doing my homework. I sent you all a job description for the chair, um, which I'm sure you have not read in great detail. Um, and I, in going through files, discovered that I also have quite a horde of historical commission stamps, which I will pass on <laughs> to whoever steps into the... <laughs> chairs. I can see them sitting across my, my study. Um, and I, this morning, did the other thing I had promised to do, which is to draft an ad that could be put on the town website. Has anybody had a chance to? Allison wrote to me and said that looks fine. Yeah, I read it and it looks fine to me. It looks fine to me, too. Seems okay, yeah. Okay, so my I will... suggestion would be to include a photograph when you send it. You mean of something we have worked on? Of something we have worked on or something historical or, or just, um, because I, otherwise- I, I'm only smiling up. because everything we've worked on has for me ended up in a fight on the floor of town meetings. So well, no, how how about it? What you're trying to do is catch, catch people's- No, I, I take your point, <laughs> I really do. Otherwise Not, it will be clip art. Right. Not of the center no. school, not of the center school. Well, I, I was looking to, before Could I be did the, this, I, maybe the pound, I don't know. Something, something, yes, some neutral. Yes. Okay, fine. I, I'll do that. <laughs> you mentioned town meeting. I don't know if it's possible to have a, converse, a brief conversation with Matt ahead of time and have him announce to town meeting that there's an opening and there's probably openings on other committees and commissions too. Well, there's certainly, there's certainly an opening on the housing committee because it's, it's chair has resigned. Um, I, I yeah. thought there was on conservation. Planning board has. Um, I just, or hmm. just ask him, you know, we could ask him to just say, if you're interested, you know, a number of committees, check the website. Um, I noticed that um, I'm, I'm just commenting without expressing an opinion on what you've just suggested, um, that the lead in town news is an opening on the board of assessors, um, which is incredibly brief, says nothing about what is required and doesn't even say that it's a paid position, <laughs> you know, so it's, um, which was what led me to say that this is a volunteer position. <laughs> I, uh, I don't know if you all drive on Route 9, but what the town of Williamsburg does constantly is that they have a big signboard, right? It's by the golf course in Haydenville, actually, but it's for Williamsburg. And it always lists the, t the committees and commissions that have openings. Um, and they change, I know, because I go to Brady Euphoria and I drive past it. <laughs> you know, they, it is kept up to date. Um, I, Susan, if you want to suggest that to Nat, do. Yeah, and also, if we want to um, talk to Joyce about putting it in the scoop, again, not just for historical, but for whatever openings there are, because I suspect people don't don't even think about it. Brian used to once in a while mention it in the scoop. Um, there's not a scoop till September, I don't think. Right. The listings, I mean, the town administrator and town clerk uh, submissions to the scoop, uh, if you, uh, they've been less consistent than they have been for a while because of because of transition, of course. Yeah. 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 Were you gonna put this in? Just trying to think how to get the word out. Were you gonna ask that this go on the town Facebook page too? I guess I didn't know. I don't do Facebook, so I don't know anything about the town Facebook page. But I, I wouldn't object to it. <laughs> I suspect it's more read than than the town website. Actually, it's kind yeah. of interesting. They they cover news too, like like the Rainbow Motel fire and. 
Well, the fire Derek, Derek fire. has also been covering town news on the Historical Society um, Facebook page, which wouldn't have yeah. occurred to me. But I noticed when I was, I have figured out, even though I refuse to subscribe to Facebook, I've figured out how to look. That's the only thing I look at, the Historical Society. And she's up to 240 subscribers, which for Tiny Waitley isn't bad. <laughs> you know, Followers, is that what they're called? Yeah. I think so, yeah. yeah. Facebook is not bad either. <laughs> yeah. So I, I will say that, Judy. I, di I didn't actually realize that. Um, and the only other thing that I neglected to say in my message is that I also have a, an enormous number of historical commission documents, starting with the enormous number, Alan, that you gave me on a thumb drive. Oh, Lord, yes. They are not in folders uh, they're not my finest work but i should probably copy them and give them to whoever whoever wants to be the chair there might be something useful in it and maybe uh i do have some i have some project specific folders that would be relevant like town hall you know which maybe the rest of you have we all went to those awful meetings together <laughs> Yeah, they were brutal. They were brutal. They were brutal. <laughs> um, okay. Any other business? That's it. I think we should, Susan and I should extend very grateful thanks to you both for all the work you've done. Yes. Um, well, thank you. Much appreciated. And you've been great to work with. It's been fun. Yeah. Sometimes. sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, and I have, and Ashley, as you said, was appointed. Um, and I, oh, I did write to Aunt Judy to ask. Uh, I wrote to Amy Lavalley and town administrator last week to ask them to appoint you to. Um, Thank you. Fill the historical commission seat. I should have copied you. Sorry. Actually, I'll find it and forward it to you so that you can bug them about it if it doesn't happen on the CPC. Uh, Maybe better to copy Alan. I'll copy both of you. I'll just, I'll, I will forward it to both of you. I should have done. I'm sorry. Um, so, um, yeah. Okay. Goodbye then. <laughs> See you. <laughs> <laughs> nice to leave on a short meeting. Small town. Yes, so it, it is. is.